It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. Pat, another good block, and Toretta lays it out. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend, dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. What's going on, LT? <laughs> another week. Another week. Big week, Gary. Big week. You know, I'm sitting here cracking up. Um, our first guest who's going to be coming on soon is Richmond Webb, and he's he's already in the lobby, and he was watching your open there. And he was cracking up like crazy <laughs> at every scene. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure he'll have a few uh, few uh, digs for you when we bring him he on will. here in a minute. But uh, huge week for the Canes. Um, yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the screen here for a minute. Uh, huge huge week for the Canes. You got Texas A&M, Richmond Webb's Texas A&M Aggies uh, coming in and. Uh, Wow, you know, I remember I was covering the Dolphins back when Richmond Webb was the number one draft pick out of uh, out of Texas A and M. And uh, man, like where I'm, I'm look, I'm looking at him in the lobby. He'll be on here soon enough. And I'm seeing a lot of gray, Lamar. And <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, a lot. I'm seeing a lot of gray, and uh, I'm wondering how the heck did I man I managed to uh, escape that to this point? But uh, we'll have Richmond Webb on in a minute, and he'll be representing Texas A and M on tonight's show. But uh, but yeah, just uh, you know, a massive, massive, massive week here for Miami. Uh, this is a game that they absolutely must win. Uh, you know, I think just in terms of what Mario's trying to do here in year two, reestablishing a presence for the program, a relevance to the program, a respect to the program. Yeah, most definitely. Um respect, all those things you just mentioned. I mean, this is a big game for Miami, uh, especially on the national setting. But at the same time, you also have to say that about Texas A&M because they have, uh, you know, this is a big game for them also. I mean, you got a new coordinator coming in, Bobby Petrino. Uh, you know, Jimbo's answering all the questions. Can it work? Uh, there's a team that was, what, I think they were five and seven last year also. This is a big game for them, uh, but for both teams. It's a huge game as far as uh, – what the perception will be from this point on for the uh, for the remainder of the season. Yeah, and you mentioned a big game for Texas A&M as well. Uh, no doubt about it. I mean, coming off of their disappointing season of a year ago, they kind of have the same agenda as the Hurricanes. These are two forces that are going to be colliding on Saturday afternoon at Hard Rock Stadium. And uh, that usually makes in the game of football, 
for great, great theater. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is going to be a good game. I'm really two offenses. Uh, I love to see uh, what our offense is going to do under our new coordinator. And I'm sure Texas A&M is wanting to see what their new coordinator can do, um, Bobby Petrino, against the Miami's defense. So this is going to be a game. I mean, but, you know, I, I wouldn't count. Uh, I would count those two as far as the offense. But this is, I think, special teams will play a big part of this game. Um, and whatever defense is able to step up and get some stops, I think uh, that'll pay, play huge in this game as far as who wins this ball game. And this game has a little bit of significance for you on a personal level for, um, I think, what, like three three or four seasons you coached at Louisville mm -hmm. under Bobby mm -hmm. Petrino. You were the wide receivers coach. And so you know Bobby Petrino very yes. well. He's the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M now. Uh, a bold move by Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher to bring in a former head coach with the pedigree and resume of a Bobby Petrino to run his offense. And uh, I know you recorded the Texas A&M opener the other day because you wanted to watch it very up close with a very keen eye to see is Bobby running the same offense that we ran at Louisville? Uh, is Jimbo allowing that? And uh, I'm guessing that you saw some Jimbo elements mixed in with Bobby's offense. But tell us a little bit about what you saw uh, when you looked at that tape. Well, I saw, just like you said, some Jimbo elements, but, you know, this is Bobby's show. I mean, Jimbo is the head coach, but I'm sure he's saying, hey, Bobby, you run the show. What makes you feel comfortable? Uh, Bobby Petrino is one of the greatest offensive minds, uh, the coach in college football. Um, and what he does as far as packages and plays and, and concepts and, 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 and cover, coverage beaters, is, is, he's very thorough. So, uh, I'm sure Jimbo, you know, he's had his offense for a long time, but didn't Jimbo look entirely different without all those damn papers? <laughs> yes, on the sideline, <laughs> I mean, he looked like he was relaxed. So I'm sure he's enjoying this a little bit. Uh, yeah, Coach Petrino, man, I, you know, I we'll, we'll talk about it later in the show, but I mean, I, I, I have the utmost respect for him as a coach, just because I, I sat with him in those meetings uh, and saw what he was trying to get done and watching this game. Uh, if you if you if you're not careful and you don't disguise your coverages and he knows what you're running, you're in trouble. And that's what he that's what he that's what he goes after. He he wants he already has a, a, a player already be a beater for whatever defense you're going to run. And it's his job and his offense to uh, to make sure they execute and they usually do execute it well. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later in the show, like you said. But um, I see Richmond here chomping at the bit to come in here and uh, <laughs> get himself a little bit of LT. So uh, there he is, uh, Richmond. Welcome to the Lamar Thomas Show. Great to see you again. Um, had the pleasure of watching your entire career here in Miami, and uh, it was uh, obviously spectacular. And uh, what are you doing these days to, um, to stay busy? Man, uh, what's up, Gary? LT. Um, you know, uh, I do a little gardening, but man, I'm I'm just trying to learn <laughs> learn how to be an empty nester. You know, my youngest daughter is at Texas A&M, and um, you know, when COVID shut everything down, I, I was stuck at the house and I couldn't do anything. And some kind of way, I got into gardening, and I actually like it. And um, it's, it's, it's it's meditation for me. I, I don't have no bunch of land, LT. I just got a backyard. Right. small and I, I started in i actually started with like home depot buckets or lowe's buckets five gallon buckets and did some container garden i really enjoyed it and this and that so that's my kind of meditation but other than that um i'm glad college football pro football is back and looking forward to another good season well, well i mean when i when i think of this whole gardening thing for some reason, yeah. I have a, a picture of Keith Sims saying, hey, Rich, I got it. I got you, man. Whatever you need. <laughs> you know how close you guys are. <laughs> oh, that, that, you know, that's my man. And, uh, man, uh, you know, he's in the Atlanta area. He's doing a little high school football. His son is actually playing high school football, so he's doing that. Wow. And I'm sure he's getting a joy watching his son mature and turn into a young man and helping him along with that process. So, but yeah, he's doing good, but always good to be on here with my old teammates and stuff like that. Yeah. We had some fun days, man. We, we got a lot of, a um, lot of stories, but you know, I know you're on the, on the time crunch. So let's get right into this. 
Come Bobby on, Bobby Petrino's it. over there, huh? Bobby you got Bobby I'm P. Man. You got Bobby. Oh, now he's your man. Now, Aaron, okay, okay. Hey, he, he, he got that maroon on. He ain't got that, that red <laughs> Louisville on no more. So he, you put that burgundy on, you'll be my man, LT. You you take what, that, 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 what, take what that you off talk? and put some AM. Huh? What is it? What is the talk? I mean, how is it going so far? What what, what are you hearing over there? All good? You know what? I, I, I hadn't really heard anything. And you know, I was I just wanted to watch the first game and I did mm -hmm. that and I knew we played New Mexico. It was an opponent like um you know, the University of Miami was coming up. But um, the thing that I really liked about it, and I heard you mention in the, the show earlier, is that, you know, it freed up Jimbo to just be a head coach, mm -hmm. a game manager. You know, he's walk, not walking around with the um, the sheets and flipping <laughs> and got his glasses halfway down on his nose, stuff like that. But with, with Bobby in, in the press box and stuff like that, you can see the, the play calling seem like it's getting – and quicker we're not always trying to get in before the 25 second clock so um spreading the spreading the football around and then uh actually i don't know if you know this but noah thomas i think he's number three mm -hmm. for us his uncle played with you project thomas so that's project's um, oh that's Roger. okay that's, that's, that's project's nephew yeah that's okay. his nephew so yeah hey, I, as a matter hey, of fact hey. i talked to him <laughs> so <laughs> I, i'm just happy to see you know they actually treated New Mexico like a, a actual lesser opponent and went out and executed mm -hmm. and not just from the start, but throughout the game. And, and I was happy to see that, but I know it's going to be a much tougher test coming to uh, the three Oh five this weekend. Mm, yeah. It, well, you know, we won't have, we'll have people kissing in the stand, but they won't be, you know, it won't be like <laughs> y'all kissing over there. We <laughs> as, as only, as only after a score now. Yeah. At, at least at, at, that's what I heard. But, well, you know, both, teams, both, both teams are looking to put a bunch of points on the board. So, I mean, as, as you well saw Bobby doing this thing, and, and we got a new coordinator. Uh, the thing that we were, as we look at Texas A&M, the thing that I was looking at most is your secondary. And, okay. you know, with our guys going against their secondary, but then I had to flip it around and go, okay, our secondary going against your receivers, like you said, the Thomas kid. I mean, this yeah. is going to be a nice matchup. Um, Should be a real good one. Offenses and defenses. I mean, I really, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going not to socialize. I'm going to watch. I'm going to be watching this. Game. I might get some binoculars. <laughs> you, you know the, you know the one thing I'm truly happy about it, and I just didn't know back when I played. I, I think you were actually still at, at University of Miami, and I went and watched you guys. I think y'all played the University of Houston in the Orange Bowl. And yes. it got so loud. And the thing I loved about the Orange Bowl, if you're the home team, the crowd was right on top of, you know, now that the stadiums are so spread out and it got mm -hmm. so loud. But with the type of talents y'all had, y'all y'all jumped, y'all beat them up pretty bad. But I was I was just like, man, but y'all y'all had some really good teams back then. But that, that's the first thing I thought about. And I, I when I saw the clips, I remember you steady pulling a helmet off. I say, LT don't let them know who he is. So yeah. I used to, I used to love watching y'all back in the day, boy. Y'all was y'all was bold, but y'all backed it up. So yeah, I was like, yeah, that was it back in the day. Well, well, I appreciate that, man. And, you know, as I was sitting there thinking, who do I know for Texas and them? Obviously, you were the number one guy. And then I was like, do I know anybody else? I guess I bull, 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 bull. Yeah. bull. Yeah. yeah, but. I don't know too many other great players Not too come many. out of there, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, sure that you played with, uh, it was Aaron Glenn was probably at the yes, Jets. I AG. think y'all came out. Yeah. Um, Kevin Smith was at the Cowboys. We had we had some players, but you know, y'all was putting ten or twenty out every year in the in the league. So <laughs> we had, you know, it's only so many spots left on the roster. So I was like, <laughs> man, y'all can't hog up the whole NFL. Come on now. <laughs> hey, Rich, let me let me ask you this. When, so. You know, you being down here, you know mm -hmm. how 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 our fans are. And yes. now, you know, Texas AM is coming over here. I mean, I'm sure some of your guys are saying, Hey, we're going to the game. Are you giving them any warnings or what, what do you say? Don't no, leave your no, con lock. <laughs> you, you know what? I was I was I, I I couldn't make it because I was planning on coming down for the game. But um man, I met a lot of Kane fans. At the AM mm -hmm. game, because y'all came to us first last yes. year. And they really had a good time. You know, we showed some hospitality, this and that, but you know, it's different. The good thing is, is like I say, the good thing is that Joe Robbie, 
I mean, pro play. I mean, um, no, it's hard rock. Hard rock. Right? It's a yeah. hard rock. I keep changing the name. <laughs> that uh, I, I think it'll be. I think most of the time, I know like LSU is pretty bad. Like Canes fans, mm-hmm. they just going they gonna rip their Canes. It's it's different. Right. I don't think they just you know come after people like that. It's it's other places. It's worse to play. So it should be okay. <laughs> No, they they they're pretty good. They they're, they're pretty good fans. I mean, they're the Dolphin fans. They're just a little they bit are. more mature Dolphin fans. And I'm sure you had a great time down here with the Dolphins fans. Uh, you know, you being the guy that protected Dan's uh, blind side, and you did it well. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm 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 really looking forward to you know it's it's about your time for you to get that that golden jacket. I mean, hell, you one of the best that. players. I mean, one of the best players I ever seen it. Uh, playing tackle. I mean, just an awesome and 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 better yet, better person. You're you're a great person. That's a, I always used to tell people. They say, "Man, Richmond, well, he's a big old dude." And I said, "He's one of the nicest guys you ever meet." Yeah, you ever yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We we been, we've been linked up a long time, LT. You know, we go way <laughs> way back. So yeah, yeah, that's it. But, Let's yeah, not tell yeah, too many stories. Now. No, no, no. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it. Look, Gary, yeah, yeah. Gary might not be ready for that. We're gonna leave yeah, it right yeah. there. Oh, I'm, ready. Right I'm right. ready for anything, Richmond. Don't worry about me. <laughs> what, what I want, what I want out of you, I want to know predictions for this game. What 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 are you thinking? What, I mean, be honest. Now, I, 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 I am gonna be honest. I, no, I I think we're gonna pull it out, but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tougher than it was when we okay. played here. I, I think the thing that um and that was that, a tough game. That was a real tough game. It could have went either way. It, it was almost and I think it's because both teams got talent, both teams mm-hmm. got a lot of things to prove, this and that. It's you know, who can execute and make the less less mistakes. And it'll be a more of a challenge for us because we're on the road. It could be a hostile environment, this and that, but that's when you gotta really focus in on the mental side of it and say, hey, you know. Let's let's go out there and take care of business and do what we need to do. But I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a really good game and it's an early game where it's a really good matchup. So I'm looking forward to it. And you know, one one of the great things about Bobby Petrino being over there, you know, he's coached some teams where he's never really had a great team, but now he's on a team, one of the best teams money can buy in America. I mean, he said. <laughs> I mean, he got he got all the skill positions. Richmond, uh, Richmond contributes to that NIL fund. Yeah. He, he knows. Um, he knows. I'm sure they hit him up for a donation to the NIL fund. But but you but you know the thing with that too is you know we we, we took a lot of slack for the number one recruiting class, but a lot of those kids had to play earlier than what they were really truly prepared to play. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I can see a lot of them mature watching them this year, so I'm I'm looking forward to them going out there. We had a couple of bad seeds we had to get rid of. They got them out yeah. of there. And it seemed like everybody's focused and, and on point. And yeah, I just I just want to see them. So they got a good start. We just got to try to keep it rolling. And that's why I said that both of these programs, this is a I think it's a, a must win for both programs. Cause I mean, both programs coming off of last year, there were so many high expectations, didn't get the job yeah. done. Now you come into this year, uh you had a great off season, you added some additions as far as coaches. Um you got players and like you said some of those guys that played last year early now a little bit more mature yeah. um this is going to be a game a must watch game for all the college football because this is going to i mean as we well know college football is is great when miami is involved i mean i don't know about texas it is i, would rather, yeah. I, would I really know you don't know about much, yeah, but, yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> but, but, but but i'll say this and i agree i think it's a must win but we know somebody's yeah. gonna lose but what i say if it's a really good game a lot yeah. of time that counts towards style points. And if yes, it's how you respond after you win or lose and continue. If you get back on track, I think it helps both teams in the long run if they both have success throughout the season. Because when they go back to look at your key losses or whatever, who you played this and that, that carries weight as far as trying to get in the playoff system. So um, you're right. It is a must win. But I know somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. But if you're the loser, how you respond to it and get back on track, I think that's what's key. Well, Rich, man, I appreciate you coming on. I know you got a lot of stuff to do tonight. Got to get ready for this. It's a big weekend, and uh, I'm sorry you can't come on down, man. But uh, I'll I'll be texting you just to let you text know. Text me, brother. I will text you, man. Don't, hey, don't, don't rub it in too bad. If y'all if y'all get to cutting up, don't 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 give me too much of the time. Look at the time now. Hey, you know me. I'm gonna rub it in. You know I, do know, I do know. I do. 
Hey, man, much love to you, man. I tell all the guys you say hello. All right, Rich? Please do, man. Hello. Hey, Thank thanks for so having me on the show. Good all seeing right. you, Rich. The great Richmond Webb. Um, man, I'll tell you, I remember the day he was drafted by the Dolphins. I really, it's like like it was yesterday. And, man, what a great left tackle uh, he was for so many years, LT. Um, all right, let's take care of a little business here. You're at Canesware, as you are every week. The show is presented by Canesware. I got Can Canesware uh, set behind me uh, on the screen so you guys can check it out. And, um, you know, Canesware, of course, is your headquarters for all your hurricane merchandise needs. You can visit their store at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, where Lamar is right now. Or you could shop 24 hours a day at canesware.com. Uh, we'll be talking more about them uh, later on in the show. Um, so, LT, the line for this game starts at, I think, seven and a half points. And, mm. and after these two teams played their opener, that was like the early line where, you know, people mm -hmm. bet sometimes in the summertime and stuff. Mm -hmm. And after these two teams played their first games um, on Friday and Saturday, um, what I want to make sure you can hear me here. Um, after they played their first games this past weekend, and then the real line came out on Monday, boom, down the five, down the four and mm. a half. Uh, the mm. money started flowing in on the Miami Hurricanes. And um, I think Miami showed up on opening day against Miami of Ohio, Lamar, a little bit better than people thought that the Canes would. Yeah, I, I thought they played well. Um, I thought that Miami for the most part, executed. Uh, they did what they were supposed to do. I mean, when when I looked outside and saw it raining before the game, I said, okay, so Miami must establish the run today, okay? This will be a great day to try to establish the run. This is an SEC-style uh, type defensive line. You should be able to move them around. You should be able to dominate, unlike last year, dominate the teams you're supposed to dominate, okay? I said, quick passing game. You want to get that established. You want to throw some quick passes, not put your quarterback in situations where he has to try to win the game by throwing the ball. Um, and they did that. They threw some screen, screens early in the game, uh, got some completions. Uh, I thought the offensive game plan was, was pretty much right on key with what they needed to do as far as for a rainy day um, against a team like Miami of Ohio. And I said what I said. I, I thought it was going to be like 35 to 12. And they scored a little bit more than that. But, I mean, I was okay with that uh, because I, I think that for both teams now, I would think that they didn't put it all out there. You know, I I, I, I don't think you put it all out there because, remember, we didn't really throw the ball downfield much, okay? Um, Texas a and might say, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to take the short game away. We're going to make you throw it downfield. Okay, we'll, we'll throw it downfield then. Um, and I'm sure watching Texas A&M, they didn't run a lot of stuff. I mean, what Bobby does over there, he's going to get some packages. He's going to have the same uh, <clears throat> the people in different formations or the same formations of uh, different uh, uh, packages where guys are going to run the same routes. He's just going over and over. He's going to just do it over until you stop it. And, you know, he is going to try to figure out where your weak spots are, which, which every coordinator does. But he just has this certain – uh, in practice, everything has to be perfect because what he wants you to do is when you go into the game, you to have that type of um, in your mind. You're thinking, "Hey, we we did this all week in practice. It should work." So you're going to have that confidence. It's not going to you're not going to be going against the first team defense. You're going to go against scout team guys, but everything's going to work and it's going to work extremely fast and efficient. Well, you know, of, of course, uh, Shannon Dawson's looking to save a little bit. Obviously, <laughs> I mean, he's not yes. going to roll out his whole yes. office. But you also had Tyler Van Dyke dealing with the finger. Uh, yes. So, you yes, know, he was not 100%, and, and they probably weren't sure of how well he was going to be throwing the ball down the field. So they started out with the horizontal passing mm -hmm. game. It worked. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So they kind of stuck with it. They took a couple shots over the course of the game. One of them got intercepted. Shannon Dawson took the blame for that. He said, I was a little bit impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, but the game plan clearly was not throw the ball down the field in that game. Uh, they just wanted to get in and out, get Tyler out healthy, which they did. And which I think the um, I think the Canes fan went home happy. And um, you know, with that, let's bring in our friend, the voice of the fan, Bruce Warner here. And uh, Bruce, welcome back to the Lamar Thomas Show. Always a pleasure. And well, hey, Bruce, um, a beautiful store. 
Yeah, Canesware. The new Canesware is really, really, really sweet. So uh, tell us your thoughts, man. What did the, the, the I thought the Canes fan went home happy. What did you yeah, what do you think? How could you not? You held the team to three points. I, I didn't think their offense was that good. I didn't think their quarterback was that good. I mean, just brothers in the NFL, but so what it was, Gabbard. Um, I, I liked the, the fact that all those kids played. What was there? 15 true freshmen got on the field, if you include the punter. So, you know, I like what they did. I like the aggression. Uh, that's what Mario has been talking about all off season is the physicality of it. And they were physical. Um, and so you got to be happy about the way they play. Yeah. They, I don't think Dawson showed much, maybe 25, 30% of the offense that they they've installed, uh, which is good. And it's smart. And, and I think LT will agree. There's certain um, looks that they showed the other day that if they do the same look on Saturday, they're not going to run the same play. They're going to run an offshoot of that. And try to catch Texas A and M napping. What do you think, LT? Of course, I mean that's every. It's like a chess match when you, right. yes, especially early in the in the season. I mean, you're you're taking plays. Um, and I know Bobby, man. Bobby is looking at spring games. He's watching spring games. He's watching uh, everything that our defensive coordinator has done for the last couple of years. He's 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 going back and he's. He's watched some of those films, and all he wants to do is get a, a nice little key on what you're doing, and he will exploit it. And I mean, but that's what most offensive coordinators try to do. But I gotta tell you, this 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 Petrino guy, I'm I'm a little worried with our secondary. One of the one of the um one of our subscribers, he even said that too about our secondary against their receivers. Um, I'm a scary. little worried. But um, let's see what happens. I mean, let's see what happens. I mean, if you were a, if you were a, the wide receiver coach, you look at our defensive backs. You know, there's about eight or nine of them, but I don't know who the standout is. I don't even know if they know they because they're mixing and matching so often. Yeah, you, know, I, I, like, you got to figure Petrino is going to go after some of our smaller guys. You know, we just yeah, well, played the other day, like Porter. And those guys are small. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, couch, uh, those guys, all the, and I think, didn't he change his number? When he, when he, yeah, 20 well, last changed year? Their number, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, but those little guys like that, you know, you see Thomas out there from, um, from, um, from Texas and him, he's a big old target, but so we have the big target too. Um, number four, um, he's a big target, so this is gonna be, I think, this is gonna be an offensive game, it's gonna be whatever defense is able to get a stop and and. You know, you add in their special teams. Uh, special teams last year was uh, a, played a big I part in the game last punt. year. They dropped the yep. punt. All right. Now, um, last year after this game, the three of us came on and we talked about, and I know Gary and I did, I'm sure you did, that we were mad that we lost, but we were somewhat yeah. happy with the way we played. Yeah. It was so yeah. hard. And as yeah. Gary said, all the rest of the season, it's like, what happened? Like, dumped all the fuel at that field, and they came back with no fuel in the tank. They were never the same again, LT. The they, same they, again. They, they put everything into that game physically, emotionally, yeah. and losing. They never bounced back from that the whole entire rest of the season. You know, and, and I remember that feeling because we, we definitely, you know, I was upset we lost the game, but I was like, okay, there's some positives from this game. I mean, I was texting them. It's an SEC team. I mean, their top tier team, one of the, you know, I, I didn't know they were going to be five and seven. Right. I mean, I didn't know no. they were going to have a bad year, but uh, yeah, we just never got back on the road. You know, right. never got back on track. I, I mean, I'm watching our guys, okay, like coming off the field up there in College Station. I mean, like they talk about leaving it on the field. Like they could barely, they couldn't walk, Lamar. Like, I mean, like, like trying to get their bodies off that field that day. Uh, I can't remember seeing that very often mm. in my in my something like to this degree in my four decades plus of covering the hurricanes and you know we've had great teams played a lot of big games but these kids uh i don't know that they were physically ready to do what they tried to do physically in that game and they were showing the wear and tear coming off the field and uh i think that like and we saw this when Manny Diaz was the head coach and Miami went to Dallas to play LSU and I mm. I think when you build yourself up so much for these games early in the season and 
tomorrow, Saturday is circled, I'm sure, pretty, uh, pretty with pretty thick red ink on everyone's calendars. I mean, this is a big game for the Canes. But when you put so much into, like, we're better. We're, mm-hmm. we're going to go toe-to-toe with them. We're going to be physical. We're going to be tough. And, you, you know, and you know, of course, this is year one of Mario we're talking about. That's mm-hmm. all about the culture that he's trying to instill. Um, and you put all of that in and all that work in the offseason and the weight room and the fourth quarter program and the way that Mario demands that these kids work. Mm-hmm. And then you're not successful on game day, LT. And – it's 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 like a shock. It's like, man, maybe we're not as good as we thought we were. And you tell us, but that might be harder to bounce back from than maybe you give it credit for on face value. Well, anytime you're playing a team, especially like an SEC team, this is you know, I coached in both conferences. I coached in the ACC, I also coached in the SEC. That's right. And I gotta tell you, it is um there's there's a big difference week in, week out. You know, I I remember Florida back in the day making that excuse. They took us off the schedule because the SEC schedule was so grueling. Plus, they had to play us. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Right? Yeah. It is grueling. I mean, it's it's because it's a lot of big bodies. Um, I mean, to be able to – you think about it. As you saw those guys last year walking off that field, being able to push around those SEC D linemen and the offensive linemen, it takes a lot out of it. That's a toll. Yes. Um, that's going to be – that's going to be the difference between what we saw that running game do um, that on Saturday against uh, Friday, Miami, Miami, Ohio. Ohio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is, it's, you got bigger bodies now. It's, it's not, you know, I, I like I like what I saw. If we're able to run the ball like that against them, I'm feeling real good the rest yeah. of the time. Because yeah. That, yeah, this, this is a test. This Miami that comes in here that this week, to play Texas A&M is much yes. more physically built yes. for what yes. they are going to have to do on Saturday. And they, and all those opportunities last year with Gaddis calling the plays in the red zone, that killed us too. Because that, that's a memory. Hey, I, hey, I can you do me a favor, Gary Bruce? coming off the field and talking about it. And of course, I remember Gary before the game walking through all the horse duty on the sidelines and talking hey, about Bruce, that. Bruce, can you do me a favor? Let's not bring up Gaddis' name again. Okay. Well, the guy that I wanted fired after that game. We're going to put him on the thou who shall not be named list. <laughs> I don't know. Other shows, LP, we got Manny Diaz on that list. Like, it was like, it's like we put him on the thou who shall not be named list because it's like, how, how long are you going to keep bashing Manny Diaz? You know, it's it's like, and Gaddis certainly uh, qualifies. For oh, he qualifies. He definitely qualifies. So let's make up for, for, for last year, the lack of, um, you know, that, that their D line, um, their linebackers, their secondary. Okay. It's different. Um, we're going to have to, we're built, supposedly we're built for it now. You know, we're, we're bigger up front. We're more physical uh-huh. as Mario always talks about the physicality. Um, we got better players. Um, so let's see what happens. I mean, they're coming down here with some, with some really good players. Um, yeah, now their we, D-line we wasn't so good last year. They were ranked no. pretty low in, in stopping yes. the run. But they're so, still big. Yeah, they're big. <laughs> but they're still I, big. But now we're, we're big, too, now. We got a massive offensive line. Yes. We weren't like that yes. last year. We were banged up, and we weren't that good. But you need to be big and agile, okay. not just big. You need Florida has big, and they ain't going to win nothing. No. They, they, need, they need to be big and agile. And that's well, I'm what watching I, the center. I, capable of pulling all yes. the way out to the perimeter yes. and throwing blocks on receiver yes. screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw pretty that. agile I saw right it. there, Lamar. He's pretty agile. He's he's yeah. uh he's 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 what advertised. I put it this way. I was I was watching him. I, I keyed in on him because I'm like, all right, let me see what the big talk is. Let me watch this center. Um you know I, I don't like really watching centers because that then Kevin Harris says that they're part of the game but um, he he did a great job. I, I I really like what he was bringing to the table, and it looked like, unlike last year, it seemed like there was leadership on the offensive line. I thought last year there was no leadership on that all line. That's why we had guys not wanting to play, guys making errors, guys jumping offside. I mean, you're gonna have those penalties early, but it wasn't as much as. Right. Probably last year. It was mostly in the second half they had those yes. ridiculous yes. penalties. Yes. Now, one of the keys to the game, I think, and I and I've been saying it all week, is 
It's just a breakout game for Leonard Taylor. He mm. has an opportunity after the bad, ridiculous penalty from the other day and these comments about that he's not in shape and whatever, but this is a national spotlight game, even though it's 3.30. He has a chance to shut a lot of people up and, and put some money back in his pocket because after yes. that dumb penalty, I don't know what the NFL scouts are thinking, but he certainly hasn't dominated. And now he's on in his third year here. He's been here for two. And he's not now. I don't know if it's the injury he's not in shape, but he only had 15 reps on Friday night. Mm. Well, that was Miami of Ohio. He, he's probably gonna get a lot more. Yeah, he'll get a few more, I think. This he week. Better, yeah. But he better, but he better do something with those reps. That's right. And and you know, the, watching that game, Texas a and game, I was, I was kind of thrown off by the running back from Texas A&M being a Miami Central guy. Yeah, you know, and they kept talking about uh, Mark Jones. Kept talking about that. You know that that just that just goes to show you the the, the outreach that South Florida has as far as in the football community. People coming in here, Texas A&M coming in here, taking the kid, um, the D lineman they took from was a Pace. Yeah, when they, Jamar Stewart. Jamar Stewart. Yeah. Jamar Stewart. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. start. He doesn't even start. Well, we but we knew that. Well, that's James we Coley, that. man. That's yeah, James Coley was, coming we in. We knew he wasn't going to start. We knew he was going to get his pockets paid. Of course. Yeah. Uh, of course. And probably, probably the high school coach, too. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is. So, he'll probably be back here in two – when we win this game, he'll be back in about two years. He'll be, yeah. he'll be one of our NIL yeah. guys. <laughs> All right, LT. So, let's – you know, you talked a little bit about uh, Bobby Petrino will be ready to exploit anything he sees he can exploit. Um, which opens up a, a lot of questions and, and, you know, you were there in the trenches with him for several years. You understand how he game plans and mm -hmm. the degree of preparation that he puts into it. So mm -hmm. take us to square one. Uh, right. it's, it's Miami week. He, how much time do you, would you say he probably spent in the off season preparing for this game on Saturday? He, he, Probably most likely was not preparing that much for freaking the team they played first. He was Miami was circled. Yeah, the Miami was circled. I mean, this is a game. Bobby Petrino, <laughs> he has some, he he's always had some I want to get Miami back in his blood. And let me explain to you why. Um that kick, that punt return that Devin Hester had when Louisville was in their top of their game and they punted the ball where he told him not to punt it to Devin Hester and he takes it back. He can't forget that. He has been waiting on a game like this. And let me tell you something, talking to him, he wanted a coordinator job. He wanted a coordinator job at Miami. He wanted a job at Miami. He always said with those type of athletes, he, he felt he was unstoppable. With hmm. those type of players, he felt like he would be unstoppable. And you think about it, he, he was at Louisville. He had one guy, maybe two guys. You know, you had a Devontae Parker. Or, you know, now you had and then you had Lamar Jackson. But it wasn't a whole gamut of guys like he has on this Texas a and offense where you got big linemen, you got a solid quarterback, you got good receivers, good running back, tight end. This is something different. This is what, you know, I th – this is my opinion. I haven't I – didn't, I didn't talk to him about this. But I would think that when he was sitting at Missouri State, he said, you know what? The only way I'm going to get a head job again, power five, is I'm going to have to tuck my tail in and go somewhere and call plays and let mm -hmm. these people see that I am who I am. And so he took that job, and and uh, this is a prime opportunity for him uh, to show America that he's one of the brightest uh, old coaches in America. But I'm sure Gidry, Coach Gidry has something to say about this. Gidry was there. Gidry was there. I met Gidry when we came into Western Kentucky when he was on the way out. He was the acting head coach. Taggart left and went to USF. Gidry was there when we all came in. It was kind of a weird situation because they had a bowl game. So you think about it. You're talking to the guys you're going to be taking their job. And Gidry was the, the head coach. So I've known him a long time. He's a great guy. Um, and he does a lot of good stuff on defense. So I'm pretty sure that he has he he had this game circled too. And once he found out Bobby Petrino was a was a coordinator, 
He had the game circle too. But but Louisville beat Miami in the bowl game several years ago up in Orlando. And then I think the first game of the season they played again in Louisville. That was Charlie Strong. That was that was was Charlie. Oh, okay. And then we beat them when they wore those god awful jerseys uh, up there in 2000. I forget what year. Devontae Parker. It was Devontae Parker was hurt. First game of the year. First ACC win. First win for uh, Bobby Petrino being back at Louisville, and we beat him pretty. That was Al Golden's. Uh, that was, that was Al bad. Golden's night. Yeah, that was, that was Al Golden's night. Yeah, I, I made sure I ran across the field and said, a couple <laughs> things, oh, Al, "Oh, Al Golden showers." But um, yeah, that was um, that was a good game. That was that. You know, I had a little mixed emotions about that. You know what I mean? That was that was one of those games where. You know, as Miami fans, they were pissed off with me because I was, uh, you know, I, I had to tweet about where would you rather play this place or that place had a picture of the Orange Bowl or not the Orange Bowl, the uh, pro player or Joe Robbie or Hard Rock with nobody there. Land Shark. <laughs> Land Shark. Well, Bobby Petrino told me to press send on that and he was paying my check. So I had to do it. You caught I, I, some crap for that. Hey, hey I, I caught some crap. I'm still catching crap. But hey, you know what? That man was paying my bills. And you know what? I took great pride in whooping Miami's ass. Because let me tell you something. You know what I told Al Golden? Tighten up. You should have hired me. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you don't want me to whoop your ass, hire me. That's what I said. That's where I looked at it. But uh, it was it was mixed emotions. I mean, yeah, I'm worried about getting Miami. more Jackson, too. <laughs> yes. Miami's my school. Of course, but some on that fire. Yeah. When, when you're coaching against them, you got to throw all that out the window. I mean, it, it's because, it's you know, all those people that were your fans are watching. And for them to even say, hey, man, you, you're excited about beating Miami? You got damn right I am. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I am excited. That's, so, that's part of the coaching profession. You know, you got, man. And, and, Andy it's, Shannon's at Florida State. Yeah, um, there's a lot of yeah. guys that's doing that. James Coley is at Texas A&M. You know, he was the offensive coordinator at Miami. I mean, that's, that's the coaching business. You know, guys change destinations, and they have a job to do when yep. they get to that point. Now, Lamar, you mentioned Bobby. Miami would have been the type of job that Bobby Petrino would have wanted. Yes, he and, wanted it. And, and Mario was hiring an offensive coordinator last year. Um, Mario goes Shannon Dawson. Right. Jimbo Fisher goes Bobby Petrino, which, right. I mean, I was like, Wow. Okay, like that's a big move for Jimbo Fisher, a guy that's run his own offense for a couple decades now, who became a $10 million a year head coach because he was a good offensive play caller and yet hasn't gone in so great at Texas A&M like they would want. But him hiring Bobby Petrino was a big deal, Lamar. Well, and uh, he I, I don't know. He was under a ton of pressure, Gary. He was under a ton of pressure. Yeah. Like, I don't think he, Mario he had, would, he had to self evaluate. I got to do something. Well, Mario wouldn't do that. Mario's not bringing in that, bringing in Bobby Petrino into this program and having the butt heads with somebody like that. Uh, so his got off, his off field stuff is what hurts him, also. It's not like what, what, I'm, what I'm finding out, Gary, what I'm finding out about in this coaching profession, there are a lot of head coaches that are afraid to bring in somebody who's much more knowledgeable than them instead of you know saying okay well i bring this guy in it's only gonna make me better some coaches don't look at it that way they don't want a guy to steal the shine you know or a guy that's been because i'm sure the questions the same questions we have about bobby petrino jimbo probably you had to think about him every night like am i going to be able to control this guy or am i going to am i the head coach or will i still be and will if he puts up 80 points against Miami, will I still have the head coaching job? You know, these, these are questions. But you look at some of those coaches that have been very successful, they've hired great coaches around them. You know, Nick has 100%. hired guys I around him. I think that was saying, one of, the that, of, our, of our prior head coach who didn't want yes. um, Mr. Highsmith in the, in the building and things mm-hmm. like that. That was his downfall. He just didn't want to be any have anybody – Trying to tell him what to do, and it cost him. And you know, I, I, I really right. believe, I, I truly believe that Mario is on the same level as far as, you know, not where Manny was, not where even Randy was, because Randy didn't hire too many, too many guys that 
he probably felt it was going to take his job. You know, he was new to the game. But I, 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 I believe that Mario, you know, if it was a couple years down the line, he probably would have hired a Bobby Petrino because, you know, I think it was a little bit too hot. It's still, it was for Jimbo to reach out and, and do this. I mean, that he was under some pressure, five and seven, ten million dollars. He needed to make a move that had people going, whoa. And this yeah. was a great move for him because if this, if it works out, man, he looks like a genius. Yeah. He, he, he gets back, you know, he's making the 10 million. He looks like a genius, probably give him another extension. And then Bobby probably goes somewhere else and makes his right. money. So, yeah. um, Works but for everybody. You know, it's, that, it's just right. one of those, one of those things that, you know, you have to be able to, you know, I, I would think that a guy like Mike Tomlin would bring in guys that are probably smarter or, or, or probably better coaches. But, you know, at the same time, at the same time, he feels secure about who he is as a coach. Mm -hmm. That's the whole issue of the whole thing. Those head coaches have to feel secure about who they are and would they be okay with bringing a bigger name under them right. and be okay with it. This could be a one and done for Petrino. He could be out if they do well. He could. He could. <laughs> he could. I mean, All right, guys, we mentioned that tonight's show is presented by Kane's Wear. They got the new store there in Davie. You see Lamar sitting there inside the store. Um, let's take a moment and give you a look at the new Kane's Wear. Welcome, Welcome to, to Kane's Wear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fans shop. Look at these nice shoes right here. These are women's wow. shoes. These are, these are pretty sweet, right? Little Converse, little old school. Let's see what else we got here. We got some of these. Look at this. These are coaching shirts. Mm. These are pretty sweet right here. The black. This is pretty nice. I like this right here. I got here's a green one. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. We got, oh, 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 hold on now. Hold on. We got some more stuff coming. Now these, these right here. Now here's you either love them or you hate them. Okay. These are the shoes I get. Like people say, ah, mm -hmm. I love them. Some people, ah, I hate them. These Air Boosts, I think that's what they're called. What are they called? Boosts? Ultra Boosts. I like them. I got to actually call down my guy Sam down there and see what, <laughs> what we're rocking with. I need, some, I need some of these Ultra Boosts. I need some of these Ultra Boosts right here. Ten and a half. This is what I need right here. These are sweet. But we have these over here, Canes wear, along with. All your dolphins, messy. I mean, there's a messy mania up in this thing. We got dolphin stuff, and we got uh, who else? We got heat stuff up in here, and Marlins. We got it all covered up in here. Look at this. I like these shoes, bro. I got this hat here. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, check out the new Canes wear if you live in South Florida, and um, if 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 you don't, you can. Uh, Shop any time of the day or night at uh, at Canesware.com. All right, so Lamar, so we've been talking about this Bobby Petrino guy. <laughs> Boy, well, your daughter will look great in that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've been talking about this Bobby Petrino guy, and I'm sure a lot of people watching know mm -hmm. who we're talking about, but some probably don't. And okay. um, you know, Bobby Petrino over the years, the recent years, has been well regarded as one of the best offensive minds in college football. Mm -hmm. It was in the NFL as as well for a while, and uh, you know people have a lot of quick, respect. For, a cup of coffee, yeah, yeah quick cup of coffee yeah. in the NFL for sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, this is a guy that's known for being able to dial it up and mm -hmm. and score points. Uh, so LT, like we mentioned, you worked for him for several years. Mm -hmm. What makes him good? What what's what's I mean, offenses are plays. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, every offensive coordinator's got his plays. What makes Bobby Petrino? good attention to detail and it's so thorough i mean we what's this what, what night is this wednesday night we, we're still in there we're still in we're still in that meeting going over stuff i mean it was tedious but on game days oh it comes together i mean you're 
you're breaking down as, as a receiver coach. Now, I'm, I'm a receiver coach, but I'm drawing up line stunts. I, I learned more and I learned more about football being with Coach Petrino than I knew my whole, uh, the whole time playing. I mean, I mean, I'm drawing up line stunts, stuff that I didn't even care to know about, but I had to have these cars drawn for I think I was um I think I had tray formation. So I had to have all the blitzes drawn up. We put them on the wall. We know all your blitzes. We put them on the wall. That's just tray. Some other guy had trips. Somebody had another formation. Some guy and you know here it is. He's looking at those blitzes saying how can I beat that? And he has it. And I mean he he has the plays for him. He, he you know um and don't forget about his unbalanced line. See, you didn't even see that in the game because it was New Mexico. He he's feared from defensive coordinators by his unbalance. Um, he has some unbalanced line play that everybody. I've, when I when I say I coach with Bobby Petrino, a lot of hey, tell me about that un, unbalanced stuff, man. He was great. <laughs> he's good at that. I mean, he just his playbook. I, I should have brought the playbook. It's about that thing. I mean, it is. It basically, he could take different personnel, have them run the same play over and over again, and you wouldn't even realize that's all he I mean, he's just changing the personnel. Let's say you take a Devontae Parker, just like he's going to take a Thomas. He's going to move that guy around. And it's going. It's not a stretch. It's already built in. And it's not like, you know, where you got to, oh, well, it, Put him over there. No, it's it's already built into the offense. Everything that he does, I mean, it is well orchestrated as far as that's how you organize, how you should be organized to run your offense. I mean, if if it's not for his off the field stuff that happened, I mean, who knows where he'd be right now? But this is a great opportunity if you know, to 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 have a good showing if that happens against Coach Gidry and, and the Miami defense. If it happens, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. But the thing that Coach Gidry and those guys are going to have to do, they're going to have to disguise the cover. Yeah, got to disguise. You got you got to disguise it. You got to get him thinking that you're doing something else, and and, and you know you're gonna you're gonna if you play bend but don't break defense, make them make the mistakes. You know, hey, we've seen it where. Rain game, got those across the middle, pops up in the air, safety catches for interception. You got to play that type of defense. Um, and Coach Coach Gidry, I'm sure he knows. I mean, guys have been in coaching for a long time. They 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 talk to each other. So I'm sure he's been – or he's either been against Bobby before or knows somebody has been against Bobby, and he knows that Bobby is going to make sure you don't substitute. He's not going to allow you to substitute. He's going to keep those same people on the – on on uh on the field and he's gonna if you go basic he's gonna kill you he's gonna if he knows what you're running he's gonna just he he's not my only one of my only jobs on the sideline for him was the point across the field and see if the guy was on or off off to the field because if they're off he's gonna throw the hitch he says hey people don't throw the hitch anymore he's gonna throw the hitch over and over and over. he's gonna take what you give if you're gonna give it to him he's gonna take it Yep. Well, I, I think that Kittry's, but Kittry's defense now, he hasn't seen much of it. He, he, I'm sure what Miami played last week is very vanilla defensively. So yeah. that's a, that's somewhat of an advantage for Miami is that he's going to move these kids around. And one of the things we have to do is get pressure on your quarterback. We have yeah. to. Because yeah. he, he, he had a good game last week, five TDs, but against whom? You know, he, he's a kid. He's still a kid. So if we could pressure this kid, no matter what Petrino does, and that's mm-hmm. going to help Miami. They cannot got, let this kid get off. They can't. You got to you got to be able to make sure that D line D line is going to be important in this game as far yes. as staying in your lanes, uh, making sure we keep contained. The same things we've been talking about for years. Um, Sealing you know, the edge. If you don't, Petrino, I'm telling you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't move the pocket some. Because I, yeah. I, you know, we, we've shown the propensity to 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 screw that up. Guy right. takes being selfish goes inside when everything is going outside. Now the quarterback has a, a two way go whether he throws or passes. So, um, you know, he's going to test. He's going to test Coach Gidry. That that he's going to test that defense. Um, you know, again, special teams is going to be a big 
I, I, I really believe special teams is going to be a big one. Well, I think I heard you say D line. And if we're talking D line, there's only one guy that we can bring on the show to talk D line. This guy, I got to tell you, something, he, we had him on the show last year, was hands down my personal favorite guest of the entire season of the Lamar Thomas show. Um, a, a guy that I've been so impressed watching him develop his career in broadcasting and he's so eloquent and he's so opinionated and he's so spot on in almost everything he says. So let's welcome him in right now. Hey. Dan, the man, Cilio. Welcome back to the Lamar Thomas welcome show. Back, How you buddy? Bruce, <laughs> Gary, I want to say this to Lamar. <laughs> Go win the game. <laughs> Go win the game. Hey, I want to say this about what Deion Sanders did to that Colorado team. Irvin and Sapp. Those guys were listening to those men. Lamar knows this as well as I do. Lamar, I think because of the 20 years of us not being good, mm -hmm. that we have lost this. Dude, I didn't go into football games. I didn't go into football games thinking I was ever going to lose a game. Yeah. It was more about going and having a great time at either the like the Fountain Blue or whatever <laughs> after. And it wasn't anything. They used to invite us more into bars and places <laughs> and food places than the Dolphins. We were so iconic. We have to get back to the belief. A&M, mm -hmm. listen, there's no doubt. Dumbo Fisher <laughs> has a pretty good roster, and he's recruited. He makes $8 mm -hmm. million dollars too. By the way, Mario's coming on my program tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern, and I'm going to tell him the same thing. Dude, this has got to be a belief. Yep. Mm. You have got to go into this game. Hey, Lamar broke down all – you know, I mean, I get we're in an era where we break that stuff down. Dude, I got to tell you, I went into football games at the Orange Bowl. I never thought we were losing. It was about effort. It was about us. It was about what we're going to do. It was about the belief. Can you imagine? Dion took 86 different portal member guys. Went into the runner-up of the national championship, and you watch him beat a team. And people go like this, man, it's one week, I go. It's one week off of a one-win team that he fired everybody. Mm -hmm. We are in this position. I'm sick and tired. Gary, Bruce, I'm, I'm tired about rivals. I don't want to hear that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Le Lamar Thomas was a gigantic recruit. Russell Maryland had two – scholarship offers it was about a profile of a guy that came to um and jimmy and butch and dave wants that who all and by the way you know what's crazy about those guys to this day 35 years later they're my best friends and mm. they have never treated me differently they come on my program they talk to me and they love me and, and i'm like man i'll tell you what i'm 19 I'm 30. I'm, I'm, I'm 60. They're the same people. Mm. It's about a belief in a program. Uh, we, we have to win a game. Yeah. It's been 20 years of shit football, dude. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, it's time. I'm sick of it. Man, it's been, it's been six years since we beat Notre Dame. That's the last signature win. We you know what's crazy about that? I, Bruce, you know what I did that night? I spoke that night on a Zoom call to the players. I said, do you believe in blind faith? I said, that's like believing in Jesus Christ. And they went, I go, do you believe in God? And they went, yes. I go, well, you have to believe in a process the same way. Mm -hmm. When you go into a game, it's blind faith that you believe that coach would get you across the finish line. Mm -hmm. Dude, Lamar is one of the – that dude's one of my guys. That dude right there is one of my guys. And I, he'll always be. And he knows that. Michael Irvin texts me last night. He goes, Sills, what do you think A&M? I go, 
do they believe? This comes down to belief this mm-hmm. weekend. They're be- I think they have a better roster. I'm going to talk, like I said, I'm going to talk to Mario tomorrow. I Listen, the Van Dyke kid, he's got to straighten his shit up. And by the way, I'm, I love the kid. He's a Connecticut guy like me. And I'm like, I, dude, it's time to win a significant game. Like you yeah. said, Bruce, Notre Dame's the last significant win. Yeah. We you know want what? significant wins every year we play. Danny, I, mean, Danny, but this I don't even know if Lamar lost four years or I lost one in three. Right. I mean, it's it. we've got to get back to belief. But, Danny, this is, reminds me of when you guys went to Oklahoma and Jerome broke the ankle of, of Aikman. That started everything because that was like, well, Oklahoma, we're going to lose. But we, we beat them. And that started this whole thing. It was like 85 or 86. Well, no, no, are, it was 85. We went – Bruce, we went into Memorial Stadium. They hadn't been beaten since like 1967. Right. Mm. Jerome goes in there, and I've never seen a game. We we made T-shirts the next week. I've never seen a guy get 20 tackles. By the way, I've never seen a guy get 20 tackles. And I and by the way, here is his palm at his funeral. Mm. I've never seen a guy go in and go 20 tackles, an interception three sacks, broken leg, a block mm. punt, a block field goal. I looked mm. at him and I went like this. I hate you. I hate <laughs> you because I work my ass off and you're him. And, you know, I just – it was it was so dominant. And it, was awesome. it changed how people – you got to remember in 85 because the NCAA finally had to start putting teams on that had high ratings. Well, we never looked back on that because after that, they put us on because mm-hmm. they hated faces like Lamar and they hated crazy mother, you know, who's like me. And they put Miami on every day because mm-hmm. we got massive ratings and we won and we beat crazy programs. And, and, I I, and still, I, I still say, I still say this is my opinion. I just had this opinion. I told somebody two days ago, 86 team. Still the greatest team that ever played at the University of Miami. You know what? I'm you know saying, what, Lamar? I'm just saying, bro. I'll never forget this moment, and I'll say it to you. We held that team to six first downs, and we had 500 and f- or 447 f- yards, and we had 29 first downs. And Vinny threw six picks, or we had like mm-hmm. eight turnovers. Jerome looks at me. They were on the 10-yard line. I look over at him. He goes, you think they score? I go, no. Drum sat down. He throws a pick. I looked at him and I said, we'll remember this day for the rest of our life and how close we were to being the greatest team in the history of college football. Team, and I said this, I go, you know what, Jerome? We did everything in our power. Mm-hmm. Between Jerome and I, we had 25 tackles and three sacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I, and I looked at him and I said, it'll never, ever, ever come down to where you kill a team like that and lose. And he goes, our backups won the national title. Look, you see those national championship rings I have back mm-hmm. there? One of them, Howard gave me. I wasn't on the 83 team. He gave right. me because he goes, you embody everything that we have at UM. That mm-hmm. 87 national title, I wasn't on it, but I was. I started mm-hmm. the season, then I went to the NFL because I got mm-hmm. declared ineligible. Mm-hmm. Jimmy still gave me a ring. I have an ACC title ring because I transferred. Because mm. I got thrown out. The only school that would take me, there were three. LSU, Oklahoma, believe it or not, and Jimmy. And I was going to Oklahoma. Jimmy talked me out of it. Mm. And I came there because I wanted to be great. And I look at the guys today. It's been 20 years, Lamar. Mm. I, I'm so tired of it. We have to win. It's mm. time. But how many of these guys have your attitude or Jerome's attitude or even Lamar's or whatever? It, 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 everything's about four and five stars and making announcements on national TV where you're going. I'm you're sick of TV. that, Bruce. Wait, we're going to find out. We're going to find out Bruce, starting Saturday. I hear you. Kevin Fagan was a two-star. No. Out of Fort Worth. Mm. Okay? I mean... Jesus, what rivals? 
I'm sick of that rivals. I told mm. Mario, I go, hey, Mario, you know, we need to recruit the inner city kids of like Edison and Woodrow Wilson and all these places. We were built in the black community. Yeah, we man. were not built at IMG or the suburbs. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> this is a this is a out of state hey, kid. Hey, I'm from Gainesville. Ah, you don't count. <laughs> How the hell did you not go to Florida? Well, you Lamar? Put, put, hey, you know, well, Lamar wanted to win. He won national championship, <laughs> and he was the one of the. By the way, I would put Lamar as this. Let's see, as one of the greatest shit talkers in the history of the UN <laughs> program, he would be in the top three. <laughs> yeah, I, I I talked a little bit. Yeah, I, but I, you I, know what though, Lamar, you had all the you had all the receipts to back it up. Well, it, well, you didn't it talk because, shit just to go like this. Hey, there is no like turnover like chain when you're five and seven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you you were twelve and zero. I hey, mean, hey, that's Dan, your turnover Dan, chain. Dan, Dan, it 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 be, it came from everything we did during the week. When you work your ass off during that week, and you compete every day, just like you run across many pro scouts, and what the first thing they say. Man, you guys at Miami practice like it was a freaking game. I was like, yeah, that's what we did. So, Gary, was, Bruce, what he's Gary. saying, we had Joe – watch this. One day in the spring, Joe Paterno, Barry Switzer, um, Lou Holtz. Let me see who, uh, who, who else was there. I'm trying to think who else was there. The guy at UCLA was there. Donahue? Donahue was there. Yeah, Terry, Terry Donahue. Donahue. He goes – how do you get your guys to play that hard in spring every day? And I, 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 Terry Donahue asked me this, and I said, Well, because I'm afraid of Cortez Kennedy or Russell <laughs> Miller taking my job. Yeah, that's the way it was. It's the truth. I mean, I had Jimmy Jones and I had all of these guys behind me. Mm -hmm. I had 105 tackles. In 86, Jerome, because he missed a few games, had 80. Can you imagine that today? We, I, I'm, and by the way, this rotation stuff that kids do today. <laughs> oh my God. I get man. it because hey. of the portal. You got to recruit hey. your own guys. But here's what I say I'm not coming out for some stuff. <laughs> hey, by the, by the way, by the way, I sent uh, our new receiver coach, Kevin Beer, a message, and it was about what you just said. I said, hey, the big dude got to stop coming out the game. Yeah. Ain't no way in hell I'm tapping my helmet no. to come out the game. Because I knew, just like you just said, the guy behind me, he ran a 4-3-1. The guy behind him ran a 4-2-8. So I had Horace Copeland and Kevin Williams behind me. I could not allow them to get on the field. Reggie Wayne <laughs> said the same thing to me. Gary, check this out. I used to throw my helmet when he pulled me out, Butch. I he remember that. He said to yeah. me, he goes, don't ever do that again. I go, yeah, Butch, don't ever replace me with a guy like Gary Mahon who's not going to make a play. You replace me with Jimmy Jones who or Russell, who Jerome and I are, are like mentoring. You know what's mm -hmm. funny? I'll tell you a story about Russell Maryland, and this goes to Butch. Russell Maryland was recruited by Toledo and Miami. No one else. And and he was just, like the University of Chicago or some obscure some place. shit like that, yeah. right, Bruce? <laughs> and I and I go like this, and I go <laughs> Middle Tennessee State. <laughs> what? Middle Tennessee State. <laughs> some, what, what? Who's that? No, it was by, the way, by the way, Lamar, to you and me, Middle Tennessee State. That's roadkill. So <laughs> <Exactly>. hey, <laughs> hey, so hey, so we're we're sitting there, and Butch goes. I don't know about this kid, Maryland, man. He became the number one overall draft choice. And we're like, no, no, no. He just got to learn how to play under his pads. He'll he'll get his feet right. He's okay. He used to look at me and Jerome and go, can you guys – and by the way, I've posted this. Ed Ogeron said this about me and Jerome because Butch made a highlight reel of me and Jerome. He goes, you know what the greatest thing? And you can go over my Twitter at Dan Celio Show. And Ed Ogeron said this after Bush left and then came back. He goes, hey, Russell Maryland, Cortez Kennedy, Warren Sapp, 
all of them used to watch film on you two guys. They'd come in and watch, and they'd watch how you guys set the tone. You're the greatest defensive lineman. You two are the best duo to ever go into UM in the history of the program. That 86 D line is the greatest line of all time. And I said, that's quite a compliment coming from you. And he was the head coach at LSU. Go over. I posted it a couple days ago, and he said that. And I was like, wow, coach. He goes, no. They all used to come in and watch you guys and how you killed teams. And I said, well, it, 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 it's, it's my legacy there that we set, a, we set a tone there. You were never <laughs> – you were never – Going to run the ball, <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Russell, Russell meant, mentored our uh, reigns were Hawkins and Stubbs, yes, right, right. Stubbs, yeah, Daniel Stubbs. Hey, by the way, if we win that game in '86 in this store right now, they're selling fatigues, just so you know. I, I mean, no, no, hey, are, I see, I see people in forever. here going pre game speech. I go. Mario's invited me, and I'm coming. I'm coming. I promise. <laughs> Here's my only problem with the Hard Rock and Lamar. <laughs> you know, I I refuse to go into the place because I miss the old I miss the I old you. lady. I got you. And got so, you. like, it's there's. I don't think there's a coincidence <laughs> that both the Dolphins and the Hurricanes have sucked since we've moved into that joint. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know. Um, yeah, I'll do it. He, he, he's going to ask me tomorrow again, and I'm going to do it and I'll, I'll come down and the rock has also tweeted out. He goes, if you go, I'll go. And I said, mm. okay. So by the way, my boss, by the way, my Lamar, <laughs> all I'm, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, we got to win a game, dude. Yes. And I'm not talking about beating Florida state's back. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. They're not good. They killed LSU. Oh, yeah, they're real good. Yeah. They're real good. They're, they're going to be in the playoffs. No question okay. about it. Well, we need to be. Well, real. we'll see. Yeah. Oh, they're going to kill Clemson. They're they're a shell of what they used to be. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, know they, you know why? You know, the kids that we need to get have to. And I don't know if they exist anymore. The kids that grew Bruce, up. Bruce, they do. You know what you have to do? You have to do your hard work. Bruce, here's yeah. the deal. You know what, Clemson? But they, not... you need to get kids that, that, that have been deprived their whole lives, and like like me, Bruce, I grew up in Newark with Caesar. We didn't have a damn thing. We have Bruce, had it. Go into the commercial. inner city and get a kid who's got nothing but jail or life, right? Or mm. NFL. Mm. Well, we'll get it's, that. It, it's changed because now those kids are getting hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in NIL. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. got nothing yeah. anymore, yeah. Dan. They got they're coming with something. You know what though, Gary? You know why Clemson's not getting those guys? Because Dabo, who I like a lot, he's been on my show in numerous times. He doesn't believe in the portal of pain. Oh, he believe in it. Well, guess that, what? That's his You're seeing the cracks in the armor now at Clemson. Yep. Mm. Get beat by Duke. Duke. No. Yeah. Killed by Duke. Yeah, well, oh, right. Duke, killed. you gotta remember something. Gary, Bruce. Duke makes bombs and debate teams, not football teams. I said this yesterday. Who would have thought, what Miami Hurricane fan would have thought that we're thrilled to have Clemson on our schedule this year and not Duke? But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Who Duke, 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 Duke has great debate teams, not football <laughs> teams. I mean, oh, my God. I'm so they look pretty good. They look pretty good. good. They look pretty good. Duke is – see, I, you know what? I have to climb out of my whole deal because Duke is roadkill to me. <laughs> and I, I just – I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, I, I mean, you I played OU. Hey, you can't think we still play, Florida, bro. Hey, Gary, Florida, the first game of the year, you know, then it was everyone else after that. You yes, set the tone. Yes. And yes. I'm like, you know, man, playing Eastern Tennessee State or uh, middle – or, or what's it uh, – Helen Keller University. That's <laughs> something I did when I was at UM. I never played Helen Keller University. So when are you and uh, Dwayne going to come speak to the team? Is that been he, decided? He's he's saying that he wants me to talk like and come down during FSU week. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I said I will because you know why? Here's what I'm saying. To me, 
That's a road game. Now mindset, you either believe or you don't. I mean, mm. it's it it just really comes down to that. You know, it's 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 funny because I never believed in. I mean, I was at Maryland. We won the ACC. You know, it's funny. I have an ACC championship ring. UN doesn't. And I have one of those, and I was eight and four. I got thrown out because I threw a guy out of a window. Mm. And Jimmy takes me in. He goes, make me want you. And I said, okay. And he goes, I wanted to go to a place that was going to be a winner, either OU or LSU, Michigan or Miami. And I said, I'm going to Miami. Mm. And when I got there, I couldn't believe we had the shittiest Weight room on the planet. Mm. We didn't even do, do you guys, Lamar. Do you know where I don't know? Maybe you were part of it, but we used to practice. Bruce, Gary, you know this. Ron Frazier used to tell us, Hey, you could use center field when baseball. you had oh, yeah. when you yeah. guys had like, like AstroTurf. <laughs> yes, yeah. We yeah. used to go in center field and work on the AstroTurf field because we didn't have one, right. And they started practice over. Did, didn't you guys have a short one? Yeah, a little short Astro Astro Astro. We, did. we did. We put it in later. But yeah, yeah we, I remember one. my freshman year. My freshman year, we actually went over and worked on that, that baseball turf. We didn't have an Astro turf field. We, we didn't even. We had a 500 square foot weight room. And I, I get this. I still hold the record for the defensive tackle position yes, at 535. Mm -hmm. yep. And I ran a four seven eight, mm -hmm. and I'm like, everyone's like, Sills, you still hold that record after 35 years? I go, bro, do you understand the kind of guys we had in the building? We had, <laughs> we had guys like Reggie Sutton, who was the greatest athlete I've ever yes. seen. Yes, but you also have those still classic the classic ice buckets. They were winners. Hey, hey, Kevin O'Neill used to do this. We we would take the wa the the ice that we had from our practice, throw it in, as Lamar knows, into our hot into our cold or hot cold tub, tub, and we would all go in, jump in because it was one thousand billion degrees and the humidity was crazy. And you know what they used to say to us? Jerome used to come to me and go, "Let me tell you something." When we get those fat asses from Michigan or Notre Dame coming down <laughs> at one o'clock in the afternoon, we'll oh, understand. And I remember when we killed them 57 to seven or whatever it was, oh, we 58, seven biggest ass beating in Notre Dame history. I'm sitting in there and I go like this and I'm looking at the guy. He goes, I go, it's pretty hot out here at the OB, right? And the guy goes, How do you guys do this? I go, hey, you know, it took me four years to get used to, this, to, the use to this shit. These guys down here, man, live in this stuff. He couldn't. His face looked like an like like an apple, and I'm looking at him. Jerome looks over at me, and goes, "This homeboy is out of gas." <laughs> man, it used to be such an advantage. Don't ever play UM at one o'clock. No, Bowl. that wasn't gonna work. Twelve o'clock. I take it all day. Hey, I don't want to play night games. What time was that Oklahoma game? game I want to play one o'clock games at the OB. What, what time was that Oklahoma game? game with Bosworth? Wasn't that a day game? That wasn't. A, that was not a night so, game. So the the not Bosworth well. game. I said this prior to the game. I go, this guy's the most overrated player in the history of the United States. <laughs> Can he never start on our football team. <laughs> and I said this. I go. I go. It's time to stop lipping. Time to start hitting. I said, this guy's not – and we went in there, and there's a big headline in both the Herald and in the Sun Sentinel. Dan Cilio made Miami – or made Oklahoma wonder who the hell this guy – was my breakout game. I killed that team. I just absolutely killed them. Both the headlines in the newspapers and both of them were like, who's Dan Cilio? Barry Switzer goes like this. I had him on my team. I gave him a scholarship, and I let him out because Jimmy and him were friends, and he let me out. But that was my breakout <laughs> game. And in both both newspapers, Cilio backs his own mouth up. Those Dude. were the headlines because you know what was great about Jimmy? He didn't mind yeah. us talking shit prior. Mm. He let us all be. Let me say this: being around 
all those wonderful African American kids who didn't have shit and had to do it. It was it was amazing to be in a room and around those men who only had that. You have to understand, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say names. Some of these guys were drug dealers at night. Mm-hmm. And then they won games. And they mm-hmm. said to me, and they go, and like I said, because these guys, I love all my brothers to this day. It was such a different vibe being in that room with those men. Man, there was no bullshit. There was nothing phony. Nobody was. It was a real deal where these guys were either going to prison, dead, <laughs> NFL. It, it, we're, it, we're I'll tell you what, it was actually inspiring. <laughs> So, so Dan, so Mario's coming on the Dan Cilio show tomorrow. Yes, four uh, thirty Eastern a, time. Give us a little preview of how people can listen to that, and, yes. and what what's that going to look like? I'm gonna because to me, it's going to be about a little bit about more of a mindset because mm-hmm. see, Lamar makes takes the he takes the best and the worst out of me <laughs> because I, I I I mean, listen, I know that we can't talk sometimes, Gary and Bruce. To people the way that Lamar and I can talk. See, Lamar, I, I listened to Lamar prior to coming on. I was like, who's that? <laughs> I go, he's trying to be like PC and shit. And I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> and, I, and, and I get, hey, Lamar, I'm not, I'm, listen, you know I love you. And I, I'm not, but so it'll be more down the lines of maybe last year did it, mm-hmm. um, prepare you better because i think um should have won that game last year actually mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and i i don't believe that texas a&m has a better roster than us see that's why i say gary bruce this comes down to believing you can win this game you're at home come on dude it's time to win a game yeah dan i'm worried about the lack of cohesiveness and playing together experience especially on the defensive side of the ball that's what scares me we're we have not played but one game as a unit, because there's so many new kids out there. Even though the talent is great, they have not played it. And, and Leon used to tell us the same thing about the offensive line. You know, they were good the other day, but this is that was the first time these five ever played one game together. And that's a little scary. You know, I, I here, this is what I said I about that, Miami. Man. This is what I said about the Miami Ohio game. The thing I liked about it, they played fast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. They were like like Lamar and I's time, we played fast. Both sides mm-hmm. of the ball and on special teams. And we looked that part. And for the first time, I saw senses of urgency mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like we played fast and stuff. So there was a tempo. My Ohio sucks. I, and I'm not going to sit here and crow over a win like that because it's hard for me. <laughs> However, what I am going to do is there was a mentality of, you know, there was a speed to it. Everything mm-hmm. was done with a sense of urgency and a tempo. And a physicality. Speed. And a physicality, Dan. And a physicality. That's right. And a physicality. And that, to me, was the encouraging part of that game. Mm-hmm. So, Dan, how did they flip the switch that I – and I totally agree with you 100%. I've been saying the same thing. It is time to beat somebody. Yep. How do these kids who have never beaten anybody – as a football player, how do you flip that switch? You almost like kind of have to beat somebody to be able to beat somebody, don't you? It's this internal, though. You know, Gary. A good damn. start would help. You know what's crazy is that when Lamar came into UM, he came into a place when he felt it. He went, okay, these guys don't lose games. These guys don't believe in losing games. That ain't happening. And what Can't it did was let it him down. accentuated his ability and it elevated his ability. Mm-hmm. And what it did, it brought the best out of you. We yeah. have to have that same environment inside that locker room that, hey, man, when I got to Miami, dude, I was going to – I tried to outdo JB. JB was the best player on the field. Um, Stubbs and Hawkins and – uh, Winston Moss and Benny mm. and Win- mm. Vinny and Bernie and all of us, 
man, Michael Irvin, Blades and Perman. I mean, God, Jesus, Crime and Gonzo. I mean, we go down the list Bratton. of all Bratton. these guys. Even, even like Bratton, Jimmy Jones I mean, was a backup, but he was mean, spectacular. It was just spectacular. And what you did was you waited for Gary, Bruce. One of those game balls right there. One, two, three, four, five. I got six of them from Jimmy. Mm. And you were hoping in that team meeting, right, Lamar? Mm-hmm. On Monday, when Jay, when when Jimmy gave you one of them. Mm-hmm. And that's what these guys – Gary, Bruce, it really comes down to believing you can do this. Mm-hmm. How does Mario get them to do that, Dan? Like, you know, I mean, because of his success. You see, here's the here's what here's what compared to Mario, or um, to uh, what Manny Diaz did. And Manny's, by the way, Manny's a good coach. Look what he's doing at Penn State. (sighs) I like Manny, but what Manny couldn't convey to the kids is what Mario can convey. How to win? This, This comes down to going out. And being a Miami Hurricane, that's got to mm-hmm. matter. Mm-hmm. It's got to matter. It's the greatest fraternity in the history of college football. It's got to matter. We put Hall of Famers in the NFL Hall of Fame every year. There's a reason for it. And you got to start making your, 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 your place in this program's history. I have a small brick. He has a brick. We all have bricks in this program. That each guy has to make a place in this foundation to build this thing, and it's been twenty years of, you know, you know, Gary, and I know this. You guys know that I've been ridiculed many times <laughs> because of my the Al Golden shit and all that stuff. But I, it, it, this comes down to we 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 have to we, we have to win a game, man. Mm-hmm. That matters where the fans go. That's Hurricane football. Yep. And this yeah, is a this, great this, opportunity. This is a great this is the great opportunity. I said it, and I think everybody has said it. Despite Florida State, Clemson, and North Carolina, this is the springboard game. They've got to win this game. Gotta win this game, man. I mean, hey, listen, um, Sap told me he believes this team's a 10 win team. I'm like, we've had one 10 win team in 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, stop. I mean, you know. I, Luther Luther Campbell and I'm one of his boys. I will always be. But I mean, you keep talking to me about. So we didn't recruit this kid that was going to Stanford or whatever that goes to all these places. And how does mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson get out of South Florida? How does even Snoop, the kid who went up and who's the backup to him, how did he get out of there? We mm-hmm. can't let these kids any longer leave South Florida, man. We can't let these guys get out of here. I mean, gotta we win, just though. can't. Danny, you got to win. If we win, we win Saturday, and we could be five and zero going into North Carolina. The table's set. There's no excuse anymore. Let me let me say this to you guys, and I know we're running here, but I'm telling you, Larry Coker destroyed our program, and I'm going to tell mm. you why. When he fired Don Solinger, mm. and Artie. and he fired him, all them pipelines went to Clemson. LSU, Georgia, and Alabama. The last mm. time Alabama won the national championship, Lamar, all the f- DBs were from South Florida. Mm-hmm. How's that? That would never happen. Mm-mm. That can't happen. It just can't they happen. They panicked. You know, they, they panicked. Not lazy in his recruiting, too. No, because what we did was – we had a shitty president, Donna Shalala, and we had that stupid ass Barry Alvarez. Who? What does Barry Alvarez know about building? <laughs> what does stupid ass Barry Alvarez know about building UN football when he built Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Lamar <laughs> and I would look at that and go, Wisconsin? That's road 51, kill. 51 to three, I think it was. Yeah, 51 Wisconsin? to three. First game of the year. Yeah. I don't give a shit about Wisconsin. We're not Wisconsin. We have five national titles. I mean, <laughs> are you crazy? But you're right, Dan. They they panicked that night when we lost that game, um, and they made that move a day or two later. And Miami football has not been the same since. It, when we lost that national title game against Ohio State, look at where Ohio State's program is, and look where we are since mm. that night. Yeah. 
Since that yeah. night, it's never changed. It's How does like a guy who won 60 ball games get fired? Well, recruiting. He's yeah, not yeah. we have not, I mean, they got in the way of Randy because of the whole never Shapiro bullshit. Selling mm-hmm. running, get this. They were more important about and more interested in about selling running through the tunnel on what mm-hmm. Lamar and I did than they were about winning games. And mm-hmm. what it's done is it put us behind the eight ball. And we're Mar- by the way, I want everyone to know I am 1000% behind Mario. I believe he's doing the right thing. I believe he's recruiting the right kids. I believe he understands. By the way, I'm helping him with NIL. I'm, we and him talk three times a week. Mm. And I put 100%. If, and I agree with what Olsen says. If he can't turn around, no one can. Mm. I completely believe in him. Mm-hmm. Well, you should. Uh, and anybody that's panning him now is silly because they can't see beyond their nose. No, no, no they did. Well, you know, and I played with his brother. <laughs> his brother was a young pup when Lamar came in, I think. And when those dudes all came in, his brother came in, and then Mario came in a couple of years after I left. But I'll I'll say this to you, man. He he understands it. It was a mess. Um Manny and Manny Al Golden and, and what I used to say on QAM. So you're recruiting, you're building championships through New Jersey. Who's that? Mm. <laughs> I want to build championships through South Florida. Because yeah. you know why? Maybe you get a two-star. <clears throat> Gary, Bruce, tell me I'm wrong when it came to recruiting with Howard. Howard would recruit a kid, or Jimmy would, that was a two-star kid or a three-star kid, say Palmetto. And what he would do is there was a kid who was a five-star kid who was a sophomore. And we wanted that kid. But you know what that high school guy would go? Jimmy's going to give this guy or Howard's going to give that guy an opportunity to play on UM. And so he'd bring that kid in. You know what that high school coach is doing? He's aiming him to UM. Mm-hmm. That is what we built. And that's why nobody could break that thing with us. Mm-hmm. All those South Florida kids. Hey, St. Thomas Aquinas, I didn't know they became the farm system for Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. Unbelievable. Well, Chris Carter started coaching there, and that started it. I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously, I mean, St. Thomas Aquinas used to be like a place where we could go up there or Cardinal or in them places. Shit, man. I mean, they're Ohio State's farm system. And I'm like, mm. what happened? What happened? to Like Woodrow Wilson? We owned it. Now we don't. Yeah. I, I had a, I had a lunch with um, Michael Rumpf and he was at American Heritage. And we were talking to him about how come we're not getting the Heritage kids. He says, well, because I was there one day and all of a sudden walks in Urban Meyer and um, and the guy from LSU who's not there anymore. And then Saban came in and another guy came in. Another guy came in. And I said, well, what about Gold? And he said, I haven't seen him in weeks. There's your answer. Weeks. It's true story. Listen, listen. Mario, Mario, Mario has a mess to clean up. He really yeah. does. And it's going to take – it's going to take – a lot of effort from all of us to help him and back him. Well, and you turned 41 roster spots this offseason, Dan. And 41. Can I tell you, 41. Gary, what I said to him? Would you? Go ahead. Okay. I'll tell you guys a secret. <laughs> um, Is it a secret? We I won't tell anybody. I said, well, we won't say anything. <laughs> I said this. I go, well, I'll tell you what, that 85-man scholarship you have, half that roster don't belong in hurricane uniforms. Mm. He goes, I know. Mm. <laughs> I said, dude, half that team. And by the way, get rid of that effing turnover chain. You're yeah, getting yeah. killed. Guy gets turnover and you're down 28 you're getting, you're getting three. Get rid of out. that. Yeah. It's time get to get rid, rid of it. it. You, you hey, didn't have to talk him into that. <laughs> hey, I'm for celebrating. So he's on the sidelines getting slaughtered. Bruce, I'm for <laughs> – look at me. I mean, you know who I am. I mean, I'm, I'm for – Lamar? I'm for celebrating. Yeah. Not 28 to 3 and you're getting killed and no. you get a turnover. And you put that thing. You look stupid. Yep. You All right, so stupid. Dan. It embarrasses the program. Put it in the locker room after a win. You know what I mean? Make videos. Let, hey, oh, hey, let, let us take it to the club. 
Let them, right. Let somebody see too. <laughs> hey, let us go to Strawberries. It's all good. I don't even know if that place is around anymore. I don't know. Strawberries. Oh, that was the best. Yeah. I, I went to Strawberries yeah. with Michael Irvin after the national championship. It was the most unbelievable night of my entire life. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't, never, well, don't, hey, hey, Gary, I don't say <laughs> I was on assignment for them. I was working at the Miami Herald at the time, and my assignment was to hang out with Michael Irvin after the national wow. championship. And wow. he let me get, get he let wait, me, wait a minute. Watch this. Did you get hammered? <laughs> oh my God. I have never had a night like that in my life. Wait I mean, a minute, I, Gary, I, let me tell you this. Salute to Campbell. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me think. Okay, I'll make this as G-rated as I can. So Luther Campbell used to have a party at the Fountain Blue. He'd get the top mm. floor and then another floor and then the ballroom. And he Ooh. would, he would put on these concerts, like the only thing wider than me in the room. Cause well, I'm Italian, so I don't know if that matters, but was the napkins on the table. So I'm in there. Right. And we're having, uh, let me say this to you, man. I don't know, man. I, I, I didn't know that the found blue had skunk problems. <laughs> like when, <laughs> when they, I, all I know is I had the greatest time and we, man, UM ran Miami and it was so much fun. I've never in my life been in a place that I would call Camelot <laughs> outside of my current family than being in that family. It's it's one of the greatest times of my life. What's the sequel you're gonna tell us? <laughs> now, you know, I decided call. not to. <laughs> hey, Bruce, you know, I mean. Because Luther, you know, I, you know, I, I gotta be cool because you remember, we all, we so, all got. Well, I would know. Hey, we all know Bruce, I used to play pool in his house. I, but wait a minute, Bruce. Was. All I would know is this: I'd look up in the stands and I would see my my grandmother, and my aunt, and I would go, "How'd you get here? We had these tickets show up. I don't know what. I, I have no idea how they showed up in our mailboxes." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I'm not saying any more than that. By the right, way, again. Anthony Abraham, I drove a I drove a Corvette around, and 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 he goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything else. Hey, so yeah, when, when when is your show on, man? I, I mean, all three I to six is, Eastern it. time, Monday through Friday. We're on Jacob Sports and. Um, by the way, we're also going to be on Sports Grid um, starting on Sunday for the first time. And we're going on with Scott Farrell and we're going in game. And so we're really looking forward to all that. And um, we're we're doing really well. And I'm very fortunate. You know, yeah. who would have thought, right? Gary Bruce, Lamar, Big Sills, one of the greatest shit talkers of all time. It's not changed since I was 17 years old at UM. Okay. It's, it's still, you know, everyone's like, well, Hey, like broadcasting brought this out, and you, I go, I don't think so. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I don't. I don't think, I don't so, think so. You, you hey, think it bro, brought? Um, you think it brought out of Mike Irvin too? <laughs> hey, hey, playmaker, pl pl yeah. <laughs> hey, playmaker. Say, here, here's a great story about playmaker. So, playmaker comes up to me, 17 years old. I'm 18 years old. We're at Green Tree, and he looks at me and he goes, "See this." Four or five, I'm an NFL Hall of Famer. Four or five. And this was after practice, two hours. We're all, you know what's crazy? We would look up two hours after practice and everyone's still oh, out. there. Still there. Still, still there. there. Still there. And there's like 50 guys contagious. still there. And he's like, four or five, I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and I'm like, it's crazy, man. And it, Turn out to be true. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hell, how about how about how about me telling Michael Irvin on my official visit that I'm gonna take his position? I mean, it's just it's but, just, but it we just, wanted was, that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. that. I, I I came there to compete against the best. Lamar, let me tell you a story about like um Craig Erickson. So Craig Erickson's get was he Cardinal Newman? Yes. Yeah. So, so Craig Erickson, we were recruiting Jeff George. He was like going to transfer from right. whatever. Mm -hmm. I think Illinois. Then he ended Illinois. up at Purdue. Purdue right? And Craig Erickson comes down on a recruiting trip. I think he went, went up and got him in a, like a limo. He brought him down and I took him out. He looked at me and he goes, I go, Hey, I hear the recruiting Jeff George. So he goes, I don't give a shit if they recruit John Elway. <laughs> this is my job. Yep. And I, Jeff George went to Purdue after that because yeah. mm -hmm. he said that publicly too because I said it in the papers the next day. People are like, hey, you guys recruited um, Craig Erickson. I go, yeah, Erickson said, I don't care if you recruit John Elway. This is my job. 
And I was like, and we all looked at him. We were like, man, that's so great. That's mm-hmm. the shit we want to hear. I want that. I don't, I don't, I don't look at that as a negative. You know, people are saying this about Dion. Think about this for a second. I heard Dennis Dodd, and I love Dennis Dodd at CBS Sports. We're friends. He's been on my program numerous times. But he said this. Dion made that pro post-game press conference about him. I said, so wait a minute. You think a guy who has 87 new players motivated them to go into the runner-up in the national title game to beat them and those guys play the way they did because Dion made that thing about him? That's not true. Maybe the press conference was more about F you, but there's not a chance in hell Deion Sanders made that about him. Right. Those players would never have believed. But it's only one game. Let's see. I mean, they're playing. No, like no. And, but, but, but Bruce, it's not one game. It's more of a mentality shift. Oh, yeah. they have a, of course. He know, he's been there. He knows, too. That's why I said all along, and I know Gary did too, that our prior coach had no business being a head coach. How could you lead somebody when you've never been to where you guys want to go? He doesn't know from that. He's, ne- he's not been there. Mario, Deion, De- Deion's never going to turn around Colorado. You know why? I'm going to tell you this, guys. He ain't going to be there long enough. Mm. And I'm going to say this. Don't let that guy get that Billy Napier job and he wears oh, yeah. the Florida badge at Florida. Where the he Florida State job, Naders because he's got an ass with Florida State for some reason right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And don't let him get the Gator gig. Because if that guy gets a Gator resources, wow. I'll tell you, I would not want to recruit against Deion Sanders in the state of Florida with him being the head football coach at, Flo- I tell at Florida. You, I tell you where I was more afraid of him getting the job than Georgia Tech. I thought that if he got that Georgia Tech job with the resources in Atlanta, with Coca-Cola, all them tipping in because they're following, they're going to jump right in on Deion, he's going to have the world. And that's the Mecca. So now you got everybody can fly into Atlanta, all these recruits. Uh, I, I just thought that if he got that job, it was going to be hell. But yeah, but I like Lamar, him. I think he got the wrong Atlanta job. I'm thinking the Falcons if he goes to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know whether I mean, he would play in the NFL. I don't know. I, I what, 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 you know what, though? It's funny you say that, though, Gary. Everyone thinks he didn't play in college football. And Ooh. all of a sudden now, but I don't know that how kid, his... that, Hey, that kid, Travis Hunter, he's a oh West Palm gosh, kid. He's great. He's spectacular. 120 reps the other day. I've never seen anything like that before. And I'm, I'm and like you said, I want to see what he does. I vote mm-hmm. on all the All-American teams, and I'm a Heisman voter. But, boy, I'll tell you what. And, by the way, Shador... You really think Caleb Williams is better than that guy that much? I don't. I mean, mm, he was good. I mean, Caleb Caleb Williams has to beat Utah. And to me, I'm like, this kid Shador Sanders is some ball player. I mean, he he's a if he continues this, he's got what Nebraska this weekend, then he's got Colorado and USC. Boy, I'll mm. tell you what, man, he's high on my list. I think he's a spectacular talent. He is. Hey, Dan. All right. All right. Dan, so, Dan, I know we, I, we, I'm we, just gonna. We've had, we've had, we've had you on for like down that hour. I was just gonna have you on for a couple minutes. That's what you do, man. When we can't let him leave, leave yet. We, we let can't let him leave yet. I got one more question, Lamar. Show, Lamar Thomas show, in Lamar Thomas Stadium. <laughs> we can't there's let him only, leave yet. There's only one guy I would do this for. Would be him. I mean, <laughs> my guy, man. He knows this. I mean, he he goes, hey, you got. Oh shit! It's Wednesday because of the holiday. I go okay. Here's the eat. Come on, let's go. And I'm going like whatever just, you need. I, go, I turn down fifty shows a week. I'm not doing them because people set me up. Of course, you know I love you, dog. <laughs> All right, Dan. Hey, before we let you go, I got I got to ask you. All right, so we established Mario's got 41 new faces on the roster. He's turning the thing as fast as he can. Uh, this week he's got to walk in that room, probably Thursday night. That's when the head coach has, has his heart to heart with his football quarter team. Pounders. Get the quarter pounders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 
Dan, he's got to will these kids like what you're talking about, like like what Dion did in Colorado. He's got to will these kids this week to do exactly what you're talking about. They got to win this game Saturday. They have to beat somebody. They have to put themselves back into relevance in college football. How does Mario Cristobal do that? Make your place in history. Mm. This comes down to where do you want to be in the landscape of Miami? Do you want to be part of the beginning or do you want to be part of the continuance of not playing well? This has got to come down. Let me let me say this. I'll give you the I'll give you Thursday's game speech that Jimmy gave us against Oklahoma. And it's kind of funny. It, it, it it's different. Jimmy used to get his ass kicked by Oklahoma because he was the OSU coach, Oklahoma right. State mm-hmm. coach. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy gave us this bullshit speech. <laughs> he left the room. All the coaches did. Jerome stood up, Winston, F those guys. Mm-hmm. This is about us. Mm-hmm. We know we're going to win. They don't believe it. This is on us. Now, that's mm-hmm. different with Murray because he's won. Okay. Jimmy never won against OU. And we were like this. Okay. He goes, We won the national title two years ago. This team's going to be afraid of us. Go kick their ass. Worry about us. We worry about us. We'll win the game. No one believes us. Everyone hates us. It's us against the world. Mm-hmm. We all sat there. I, I, I'll never forget. I get in that locker room the next day, and we're getting ready on Saturday. I walk out there. I see all them dudes at OU, and I go, and I go like this. It was like one of my first starts, and I go like, and I said, I'm going to beat the piss out of this team. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the piss out of this team. And I and and we did. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and I was like, and then when you win a game like that, Gary, Bruce, it resonates the rest of the year. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. then it's a program setter. Right. That's why I made Saturday's game analogous to that game because it's something that could just turn everything around. That's and by the way, this AM team is not as good as them OU teams. <laughs> yeah, we were five and seven last year too, dude. Hey, hey, just, hey, Dan. Just be careful. Be careful, Jumbo Fisher. If that guy don't get it done, he'll be fired because it'll be the first time in sixty-two years they've had back-to-back losing seasons. A mm. and M doesn't tolerate that kind of shit. He's got a lot of pressure on his. Yeah, ass that's what field. I said before you came on. Yep. Yeah, go to hey, go take it to him. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dan, right. do me a favor. Do me a Jump favor, though. Them. That'll help a lot. We got to come out of the gate fast. I, that's when, what you, I, when you have your pregame speech, don't don't shed a tear because it's gonna happen. I mean, it's gonna happen because we go, you're an emotional guy just like I am. Now, I couldn't imagine coaching there because I would give a damn a crying speech almost every damn day. <laughs> like I, 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 I really would. I mean, it's like you know, it, it's 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 something different that I you know the coach at Kentucky or Louisville. It's different. I, I'm, I mean, I want to. I get an ass with you though. Why did you let Lamar Jackson go to Louisville? Uh, because he recruited him. I recruited him, and I wanted to to tell Miami, "Fuck you," basically. Okay, and everybody else. Okay, Miami didn't I didn't even recruit him because you know what? You know what he did? You know what he did? Back, you know what he, did? he DM'd me. He goes, "Ask Lamar that question tonight." Mm. I oh, said, "Okay." I, 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 want, I, I said, want, you I know, want... my biggest regret is you not going to UM. <laughs> he goes, ask no. Lamar. Hey, man, I, you know, listen, you, you know, you do everything possible to put yourself in a situation to become attractive to a program. And I wasn't attractive enough. So I took my ugly ass and took my beautiful woman and I took him over to, to, to Louisville and he became the most attractive player in the history of the game. And uh, hey, just like hey, I Lamar. told Al Golden, you should have hired Lamar, me, buddy. Lamar, you're a legend <laughs> and my guy. You know that. Okay. Hey, it, hey, you're a legend on, on our program. Appreciate it. Yeah. And you hey, know what? I don't say that. Me. There's not a lot of dudes. You're you're a legend in our program. I appreciate it. Hey, Dan, if you need me to come on your show, man. I will. Time, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, no. I'm going to be ringing your bell, too. Bruce, I, I even do it. I even talk a little XFL at some point. Hey, let me say this to you, Bruce and Gary. You know, these guys 
have had really like hot and cold relationships with big shows. And I like them a lot. I come on because I do like them because you know why they got opinions. And I'm good with these guys, man. Especially you, Gary. You've talked, you've been high on me, talk shit on me, been high on me. <laughs> talk shit on you. Are you crazy? <laughs> you hey, talk shit on you. <laughs> no, no, no. Early, early Wait a minute, <laughs> Gary. Gary, <laughs> Gary, it's family. <laughs> hey, hey you're, you're all the flashy you get you get um Dewey on the show. Where are you? So and I was reminding you of that when I texted you. So wait a minute. So so Maya his like uh, his his person is like, oh my god, Dwayne's coming on the program because he wants to talk about the acts of Fallon. I'm like, okay, right. great. So you know, he he posts these crazy things about me. I didn't even know he knew about me. He's like, you and Jerome. Set the tone, your <laughs> legends, your this and that. And I'm like, hey, you know, kind of like patting me on the head. Get out of the show. I don't, where are we going here? You know? <laughs> so we're working on it. All right. Hey, hey, make sure you tell my boss I said hello. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. I will. Hey, listen, Mario's on tomorrow at 4 30 on my show in Jacob Sports, <clears throat> Eastern time, 4 30 Eastern. And we're going to talk some hurricane football against AM. Yeah. I how, think how can we listen, Dan? How do we get the show? Yeah, how do we uh, get Jacob the show? Sports, um, dot com. Go to the uh, channel. We um, are going to have him on tomorrow at 4 30. And we're so looking forward to it. And um, yeah. I think this is the biggest game since he's been there. Yes. Yeah. All right, so so if I can call into your show, you'll put me on one day. You'll actually let let them put me on the producers. <laughs> you say, I don't want him on my show. Begrudgingly, I will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Appreciate hey, the big skills, man. Hey, guys. You know, you know what I think of you. Thank you so much for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Great, great, great game with you tonight, man. Thank you. There you go, right there, legends. That's what you are, legends, silly. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Appreciate thank you, Lamar. It. Thank you so much, man. You bet. Man, he is, so, he is so awesome. <laughs> He's the last person on earth that I would ever talk shit about. Are you kidding me? Yeah, man, you, got, you guys just got to let the deals run, man. Just let him run, man. He's like, yeah. hey, just yeah, let him run. He's let him go. You ask one question, and an hour and a half later, you yeah. may get another word in edgewise. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. I love it. But he had a lot of – said a lot of good things, and, you know, he's from, that, he's, he's, he's from <laughs> He's from that era of – well, I hate to say it back – back when we played because it, it's a different kid now. It's a different atmosphere. Everything is different down there. Mario's trying to get it back. Yep. And, and, you know, as we well know, you got to get rid of that, that some of those guys, which he's done. And somehow, like you said, Gary, when, it, when it hits the fan, we're going to see how this team reacts. Yep. And that's the most important yep. thing when, when, because you know, Hey, I didn't play alongside this guy. He just got here last week or two weeks ago. OK, I don't know this dude. I just got here uh, last year. He, You know, I don't. So we don't really know how how to handle when adversity hits. So hopefully. Mario, that coaching staff, that umbrella is has them all in line and they understand that when shit hits the fan, we still got to go out and perform because the bigger picture yeah. is us getting the win and playing. Well. And it will on Saturday. It yeah. will hit the fan at points in that game. Oh, yeah. there, there's too much talent on the other side of the ball. Uh, we've talked about Bobby Petrino and his presence uh, earlier in the mm -hmm. show. Trust me, he is going to be seen, felt, and heard in this football game mm -hmm. at various points. Okay, He is that good of a football coach. Uh, Lamar told, you know, knows that firsthand. Um, from working next to him. So uh, before you let me go, Gary, what do you know about Arroyo? I think he's going to play somewhere. He's close. I mean, it's a question of whether he's going to be there by Saturday. Um, you know, he's right there on the edge. I, I didn't think. Try to get in the game though. We need a tight end to catch the damn ball. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't rush a guy too fast I off the ACL. Yeah. So, like, you know, he wasn't ready at the beginning of camp. He's been working and working these last four or five weeks. Uh, he's very close, and it'll be a, a game day decision whether they feel he's ready to go. I know. Okay. All right, Bruce, give us any any closing thoughts. I'm looking forward to this game. I'm mm. sick and tired of, like, we played Florida, we should have won. North Carolina, mm. we should have won. I'm sick and tired mm. of we should have won. Last year, we should have beaten these guys. Mm. I think the effort's going to be incredible. The place is going to be electric. Probably like the Notre Dame game, I would think, mm. even though it's a day game. 
and I think Miami wins on a field goal by our field goal kicker mm. or Gallus, and we beat them like 31-28 or 31-27, something like that. But I think Miami turns it. Finally, we're going to win a game that we must win. This is going to be like a game. I like it'll it. be like turning once it happens. I think yeah. it'll be like turning on a faucet. Yes, and, and letting it run. And these and kids, they have to experience. And ESPN will be, oh, we're back, and now that crap will start all over again. We're back. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's, I understand. It, but it, the it, talk it, is what's important. The national it, it, talk about Miami is important. It is, but the, more than anything, these kids have to experience win. what it's like to beat somebody. And and to be a winner down here. We don't let that happen next week against. You, you're gonna you're gonna find out, and these these guys are gonna find out. You win this game against Texas A&M, you're gonna find out what it's like to be a winner down here in South Florida, mm -hmm. because you go from you know we don't even know half these guys' names. Think about it. Back in the day, you knew everybody's name. They knew you your name. And they knew your stats. They knew everything. And, and half these guys, I don't even. I don't even know. I just call them by the number. We we are watching the games this year with a roster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you're 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 circling guys, going, damn. Okay, he might be a good player. Okay, okay, he is a good player. Where was he last year? Or where was he? What high school or what? What number did he wear last year? You know, these all these questions that we have come up now. You win this game, these people here in South Florida, they're going to know your name. Yes. That's that's what I've always said. We won games here. That's why people still know us, because we were winners, just like the Marlins when they won their championship, just like the Heat when they won their championship, just like Messi now. I mean, this this is what South Florida is. It's about winning down here. Mm -hmm. Anything less, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there guys that played at Miami Hill. I don't even know them. They're like, hey, I played in Miami. I'm like, shit, win. <laughs> oh, we weren't winning back then. That's why I don't know you. My bad, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, all right, Bruce. All we'll right, see yeah. you uh, next. We'll see you next week or at the stadium on Saturday. Uh, thanks for being part of the show again. All right, my pleasure, thanks, you guys. Bruce. Have a great game. All righty, Bruce. All right, LT, let's take a moment and talk one more time about Canesware before we do a little word association. Uh, football season is here, and Canesware and Davey has opened a much larger store. You see the merchandise Lamar's showing off. You see the store in the background and be behind me. Um, this is the biggest and best Canes store that's ever been opened. And at Canesware, they have the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes gear in town, more gear than you could ever imagine. And, um, the season's in full swing now. You want to be all decked out. Canesware has T-shirts, jerseys, shoes, polos, polos, um, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, magnets. They have all sizes for men, women, kids, babies. Uh, they even have gear for pets. And um, if you want to go tailgating this weekend, you can stop by Canesware. They have tents and tables and chairs for your tailgating needs. Uh, if you've become a messy fan, or a Dolphin fan, they've got some extra shirts there in the store to, to give you a one-stop shopping destination for all your sports needs. It is a great time to get stocked up for the new season. Canesware is more than a store. It's an experience. And in that expanded location, they've got the largest selection of Canes gear that you'll find anywhere. It's at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, right next to La Spada Sub Shop. So in case you're hungry, you can go get yourself a La Spada sub, and you can shop at Canesware all at the same time. La Spada subs will fill you up, guaranteed. Lamar, Lamar's got to get got to get to the show early enough so he can get himself a La Spada sub before right. he um, before he starts the show. Anyway, um, open Canes houses. <laughs> Canesware is always open at Canesware.com. So visit the store at twenty six fifty five South University Drive in Davie, or go to Canesware.com. For all your Miami Hurricanes merchandise needs, and uh, oh, those are nice. That's a pretty sweet shoe right here. Are those men, those are ladies, aren't they? Those no. are ladies, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, LT, let's do a little word association, and then we'll all let right. uh, we'll let Ken and those guys at Canesware go home. <laughs> um, they've been there. They've been there probably since nine o'clock. Um, let's start with um, Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo made a a decision this year to add Bobby Petrino to his staff. Um, it's kind of like what Big Seal said early in the show. Um, you know, they didn't have a great year last year. So 
for him, this is a uh, this is one of those years that I mean, this is a big game for for Texas A&M. So, I mean, anytime you add a guy like Petrino, and uh, you know they've always been able to get good players in there, this is a this is a big win. This is a big game for them also, just as big as it is for University of Miami. It's a big game for Jimbo Fisher because if if they go out and they play well, it looks like he's a genius. They don't play well. Who knows where their season is going to go? So it's a huge game for Jimbo. I think that I, I got to tell you, he looked more comfortable on the sideline than he <laughs> than he ever has. I mean, he wasn't sweating. He didn't have his glasses. Mm-hmm. Didn't have nine thousand papers. And I mean, so again, this is a big game for them and 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 Jimbo. The reason he looked so comfortable was Bobby Petrino. You got to call plays. You know, so Bobby Bobby Petrino. Bobby P. He's he's up there dialing it up. So, you know, oh, oh, Bobby, this is a game for him. This is a big game for him. This is the game that he circled because this puts him back in the national spotlight. And that's all he's he, he wants. To be, he wanted to be back. He left Missouri State um, to, to get this job because he knew that staying there, he probably will never get a, another opportunity to be a head coach at the Power Five. But if he has uh a good season this year. Who knows? Bobby Petrino could be back in the head coaching job somewhere in the power five. All right. Tyler Van Dyke. TBD. You know, we got to have a good game this, uh, this week. Uh, this is a, this is a game that, you know, we've seen what he could do over the, over the last couple of years, but this game right here, he's going to have to put it together. This is a national spotlight game. So he's going to have to put it together, play well, uh, play within him, not try to do too much. Um, don't be greedy. Take what they give you. Let 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 your athletes move the football. And uh, you know, as long as he doesn't make mistakes, because mistakes are anytime there's a mistake, it seems like it kills us. It kills us mentally. So hopefully they have the same type of game plan where they're going to run the football, be able to throw quick passes. Maybe that open that'll open it up for the the medium pass and the long passes downfield. But they need to have a great game plan to go against Texas A and M. Uh, and it starts with just being consistent. You know, you got to be consistent. TVD's never won a a big game, Lamar. He's, no, he, he's, never, he, he's never beaten anybody. So this is his opportunity for sort of like a coming yeah. out party coming of his own. Party. Let's go. You know, let's go, TVD. Let's go. And uh, lastly, take us home with Mario Cristobal. All right, Mario. You know, this is the type of game you you came to Miami for. You know, you didn't you obviously didn't know how bad it was. You got to see it last year. You built this thing up. You got rid of half the damn roster, maybe more than that. You got a uh, a good team coming in here, Texas A&M. It's a big showcase for your program and where you're trying to get, because if you win this ball game, everybody jumps on board. And I know that's what he wants. He wants to have a good showing in this game to beat a good SEC Texas a and team and, and get this program back right. Because you think about it, you win this type of game, everybody's jumping on board and saying, wow, Miami's back, which, again, you're not going to be back until you win a championship. Yeah, and, so and it's least, not like Texas. At least be, yeah, at least be relevant. And that's what I relevant. think for him, getting us back to some type of – to be relevant, that's winning a, a high-profile game during the season, whether it's yeah, Texas and that's what this is. North Carolina, something like that. We haven't won a big game, like you said, since Notre Dame. This that's what this is. This is a high profile game more than a a big, big game because te- Texas AM is a good team. They have a lot yeah. of talent, but they are f- trying to claw back the same way that the same Canes way are. We are. Same way we are. Like the, you know, they're are. they're not there yet either. Uh, but this will be a battle of wills on Saturday. Uh Mario's got to get his team mentally ready to do whatever it takes to have the will to win this game. Uh, I think they will. I, I think this this is their moment. I think they're, they've built up to this. And, you know, I hope I'm right because it's been too many years for the Canes fan uh, to not be relevant and not 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 be people. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, the special team is going to play a big part of this game, so I'm looking forward to uh... – to this, I'm looking forward to a good game. I'm, I can't wait. I'm excited, man. I'm I might get there at 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this game. This is, yeah. this is the type of games, man. You, 
we've, we've all imagined Miami playing and, and, you know, it's just a building block. So to play Miami of Ohio, now you play a Texas A&M, it gets you ready for the, the ACC. You know, we still got North Carolina, we got Clemson, we got, you know, all these teams back in the back. But I think this is a good challenge. It's a good test for us to see where we well, are. You win Saturday. Now, you're, you know, you're looking at Bethune, you're looking at Temple. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're looking at Georgia Tech and then and then mm -hmm. you go on to North Carolina. Uh, you have a great opportunity to make this a very relevant, significant season mm -hmm. if you win Saturday. So yes. uh, hopefully they yes. can get it done. All right, LT, I uh, want to thank Richmond Webb for getting us started tonight. Great to see him again and uh, hope that he's not very happy on Saturday when his Texas a and <laughs> Aggies uh, roll into That's South funny. Florida. <laughs> of course, we got to thank Dan Cilio for carrying the show tonight. Um, <laughs> he, he's the best. We'll see everybody out at the uh, stadium on Saturday. Make sure you stop at Caneswear on your way to Hard Rock. Load up on some of this gear. You can see this from the pictures and the, the background behind Lamar. The, uh, the racks, the shelves, they are st stacked up with Kane's gear. Uh, just waiting for you guys to come on by. You can pick up some Laspada subs, take to your tailgate parties. If you need an extra chair, they got those too. So uh, stop Ooh. by Kane's wear on the way to the stadium on Saturday. So for mm -hmm. Lamar Thomas, I'm Gary Furman. Thank you once again for being part of our show. We will see you guys again next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>